Howdy folks, this is Big Sam. I recently put out a short on YouTube talking about how if your Mosin isn't hitting where you're aiming, especially if you're using something like this 9130 pattern rifle, you might want to try shooting it with the bayonet attached because that's how these rifles were originally sighted in at the factory, the bayonet attached to the end of the rifle. Now, one of the things I was really surprised by was just how many people commented that that will not make a difference at all, absolutely whatsoever. Now, if it was just a couple of people, I would have ignored it, but the amount of people who vehemently believe this will not make a difference on your Mosin really surprised me. So unfortunately now I have to make this video as a rebuttal. Now, first off, I am not a physics professor in any way, shape, or form, as y'all can probably imagine. Uh, I'm a, I'm many things, but a physics professor is just not one of them. So I want to th first give a shout out to Silencer Central for helping provide some really good information that I'm going to go over because what we're talking about today is not only relevant to bayonets, but it's also relevant to suppressors, which maybe some of y'all are more uh, in tune with, especially today, because generally we don't shoot rifles with bayonets attached, or at least when we do shoot rifles, it's going to be more likely that we're shooting a rifle with a suppressor attached than with something like this old bayonet attached to it. But anyway, um, if you're interested in reading more about this topic after the video, I'll put a link in the description down to Silencer Central's article on this because I thought it was pretty good. Uh, someone like me who's not at all a physics professor could understand it. So I really appreciate that and hopefully you'll get something out of this. Now, first off, what we need to talk about here is a really simple concept called barrel harmonics. Now, to give you a quick analogy of what barrel harmonics is like, think of a guitar or depending on where you're from, maybe a banjo. And you know how a guitar or a banjo have this thing called a string on them. And when you pluck the string, it's going to vibrate like that and it's going to make a sound, right? Well, if you let the string sit and you watch it vibrate, it's going to slowly vibrate less and less. And then eventually it's going to return to the neutral position, okay? Which is just not moving at all. Well, when you fire around through a rifle like this Mosin 9130, the barrel is going to act the same way that that string does, okay? It's going to vibrate, and then it's going to slowly stop vibrating until it stops vibrating altogether, like that. Really simple, right? Okay, now why is this relevant to what we're talking about bayonets? Well, we need to talk about another important topic called point of impact. You'll also hear it referred to as its abbreviation, POI. Point of impact is simply referring to where your bullet is hitting on the target. Or if you're lucky like me, it's hitting the target. If, or if, sorry, if you're unlucky like me, it's probably not hitting the target, but that's a story for another day. But anyway, what I want to discuss here is the fact that every barrel is going to sort of have its has its own uh, resonant properties right it's going to vibrate in its own its own way when you shoot it now if a barrel it is not into contact with anything else like the stock typically we would call this in modern terms a free floated barrel if you have a free floated barrel right every time you shoot the rifle it's going to vibrate it should theoretically vibrate the same way and then return to its neutral position, okay? So that's good because you're gonna have repeatable follow-up shots and your point of impact should be repeatable as well. But on a rifle like this, your barrel really isn't necessarily free-floated. It's definitely gonna have some contact with the stock in here. And if it's not free-floated, what that's going to do is apply pressure on the barrel and and it can modify the way your barrel vibrates. It can also prevent your barrel from returning to that neutral position after it's done vibrating. So there's a lot of reasons why you want a free floated barrel. But in a case like this where we don't have one, we sort of have to just go with it. Now, there, there's some things you can do but to, to accurize rifles like this, but that's really off the topic of this video. Um, but I wanted to mention that because that's one thing that can impact how your barrel is going to vibrate. 
But the other thing that can impact how your barrel vibrates, which we do have control over, and more relevant to the topic of this video, is when you bolt something to the end of the barrel, like this guy. Now first, I'm gonna make sure this guy's unloaded, and we are clear. So what I'm gonna do is simply just put a bayonet on the end of the rifle. Now, by do what I just did, I actually modified the harmonic properties of the barrel, okay? I've modified the way the barrel is going to vibrate. So now what's going to happen is when I fire this rifle, the barrel is actually going to be vibrating while the barrel is, or excuse me, while the bullet is still in the barrel. Now think about this. If your barrel is whipping around like this and the bullet is still in it, yeah, that can definitely have some uh, modifications on where that bullet might actually hit, aka your POI. Well, if what I do is put a bayonet on the end of this rifle, and if I've also, by doing that, modified the way the barrel is going to vibrate, I've modified, at least theoretically, my POI. And while I still could get good groups by having something like this bolted to the end of my rifle, maybe my accuracy didn't change. And when I say accuracy, this is a disjoint concept from POI in this case, because accuracy is going to refer to uh, my group size, okay? But that's, I'm not, that's not saying where the group is, right? If, is the group on the top right-hand side of the target? Is it on the bottom left-hand side of the target? That is POI, okay? So there's point of impact where the group is, grouping is actually lying within the target, and then there's accuracy, which is how big is the group. So these are two different concepts, and hopefully uh, that makes sense. What I'm not saying is putting a bayonet on the end of your rifle is going to really, really uh, large enlarge in your group size and make your rifle less accurate. What I am saying is by putting a bayonet on the end of your rifle, you can change where that group lies within your target. Hopefully that makes sense because again, this is going to change the harmonic properties of your barrel. Okay, and one interesting modern concept I want to refer to because remember this, this whole article came from a suppressor website. It's the same thing for suppressors. Let's say you're going out uh, hog hunting at night in Texas, okay? And you know you're going to be shooting suppressed. But you go to sight in your rifle without the suppressor attached, okay? One of the problems you're going to run into is when you go out hog hunting at night with your suppressor attached, your point of impact could very well be either a little bit or quite different than where it was when you were out shooting it and sighting it in maybe earlier that day. This is why if you ever need to go shoot suppressed, make sure to sight in that rifle suppressed because, or, or vice versa. If you're sighting in your rifle or you want to go shoot it unsuppressed and you have a suppressor, make sure to have the rifle sighted in without the suppressor attached. This is especially true for rifles kind of like this Mosin where you have a long barrel and you have a particularly thin barrel. This, this rifle has what we would refer to as a pencil barrel, okay? Rifles with bigger, thicker barrels are less prone to these um, changes in harmonic frequencies and stuff, right? Because uh, while if a really thick barrel is gonna be fired, it's still gonna vibrate. It's just not gonna have the same uh, effects that a that like a bayonet or suppressor would put on it that you know a small a thinner pencil barrel would okay um you know the the same properties are going to be applied to that thicker barrel but it's just not going to matter as much because it's just a much thicker barrel hopefully that helps make sense because again i'm not a physics professor and i'm just doing my best to try to explain these uh kind of complex concepts rather simply but at the end of the day I think the moral of the story here is pretty clear. Uh, guns have harmonic balancing properties to the uh, barrel, or I really should say harmonic, not harmonic balancer, because that's talking referring to a part on a, a car engine. Uh, 
vibrational properties is really what I was trying to go for there. Okay, um, and it's going to be more so a potential issue if you have a longer barrel and thinner. If you have a much shorter barrel like an AR pistol, right? Yeah. It may, you may find like shooting at suppressed versus unsuppressed doesn't matter quite as much, especially because remember if you have a shorter barrel, the, it's going to have a much smaller time that the bullet is actually inside the barrel. So any changes to how the barrel's vibrating while the bullet's inside it is going to be reduced because there's just not as much time that the bullet's actually in the barrel, right? If, you have a, if, the, if the barrel only goes out to here, then it may not matter that much. But on a rifle like this, with a 9130, this is kind of the perfect storm. You have a really long barrel, and you have a really thin barrel. And so, next time you're out at the range with your 9130, I challenge you to go try shooting it with, first of all, without a bayonet, and then aim at the very same place, but go shoot it with the bayonet attached and see if you see a point of impact, because chances are you may very well could. So hopefully, guys, this helped clear things up. Again, if you're interested in learning more about this topic, go check out the link I put down in the description. But hopefully this makes sense why putting a bayonet or a suppressor on the end of your rifle can very well make a difference on where that bullet is hitting. So thank you guys for watching. If you like more Mosin Nagant content like this, please consider subscribing. Let me know if y'all have any prayer requests, and we'll see you next time.